Join us on Profiles of Nature, when we take a look at the tree squirrel, including three threatened species. They come in every shape, size, and color, hundreds of different kinds. In Europe, Asia, Africa, North and South America, everybody knows a squirrel. And among the most engaging of them all, the tree squirrels of North America. This is the typical northern fox squirrel. It's called typical because that reddish, foxy color is common to the northern variety. These are a male and a female, and it's obviously mating season. If need be, the fox squirrel builds a nest of woven twigs and leaves, but it prefers a hollow tree if it can find a vacant one. These are baby fox squirrels, about six weeks old. They're just starting to explore. They're learning how to climb and finding out what it's like to be a tree squirrel. This is a mother relaxing with a youngster on the branch of an oak. It's hard to say if they're defleeing each other or just exchanging fleas. A curious raccoon is no threat to a creature of this size. The northern fox squirrel is as big as a small house cat. It's one of the largest tree squirrels in North America. They spend a lot of time just resting in the safety of the trees. This pretty creature nibbling on a walnut is a blonde northern fox squirrel. This is the blonde phase, or version, of the species we just looked at. Squirrels have this disconcerting habit of producing different colored members in one and the same species. What's this, an intrusion? But surely there's plenty of tree to share with a rose-breasted grosbeak. A hungry young flicker. Flickers share the squirrel's liking for holes in trees. This black or melanistic individual is yet another version of the northern fox squirrel. It lives with lots of its relatives in Marysville, Kansas, 
which the citizens proudly call Black Squirrel City. The chill air and blazing colors of the fall are signals to prepare for winter for birds and beasts alike. In late summer and fall, the diet of the northern fox squirrel includes the seeds and nuts of almost any tree that grows within its territory. Oak, hickory, birch, walnut, butternut, black cherry, elm, basswood, maple, ash, and the coniferous trees all provide food that helps fatten the fox squirrel and see it through the winter. Like certain other squirrels, the northern fox buries surplus nuts and acorns for winter feeding. When the harvest is good, a squirrel may hide 40 or more in an hour and thousands through the autumn months. This store of food is really communal. The squirrel doesn't remember where it did its burying. When the time comes, it will simply use its excellent sense of smell to find whatever it can find. Some of the store will be enjoyed by others who are not so provident. Part of the hoard will not be found at all. It will be left to sprout and make new trees. The trees in which these squirrels make their homes and which provide them with their food may have been planted by their ancestors over 100 years ago. a flock of snow geese wintering in the Delmarva Peninsula. This peninsula is named for three adjacent states, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. It's the home of yet another fox squirrel. This is the rarest squirrel in North America called the Delmarva fox squirrel. The rarity of this creature is largely due to the rarity of the mature forests, which are its natural habitat. The Delmarva fox is listed by the United States government as an endangered species and is therefore legally protected. But predators in the wild know nothing of human laws. To a bird of prey, a forest preserve is just another hunting ground. And to this young red-tailed hawk, one squirrel is pretty much like any other, except that the Delmarva fox is bigger than some and easier to catch. A hawk will sometimes take an unwary squirrel from a treetop perch, but for the most part squirrels are safest in the trees and most at risk when running on the ground. This fine tail belongs to the most common tree squirrel in North America, the so-called gray. As we shall see, the gray squirrel is not always gray, but this one is, and so it's called the typical northern gray. The gray squirrel is somewhat smaller than the fox squirrel. While those others are left coping with their fleas, this one makes a quick trip to its larder. This is a bit of antler bone on which it nibbles to get its calcium fix. If a gray squirrel can dodge the hawks, owls, dogs, and foxes which are its enemies, it may live to be 10 or even 12 years old. But most of those we see scampering in the trees are probably under five. This is the black northern gray. 
This phase of the gray squirrel is on the increase. Squirrels do not feed on seeds and nuts exclusively. In the spring, they will feast on the young buds of maple, elm, and oak trees, and perhaps a bird's egg or two. Later, they may supplement their diet with insects and mushrooms, or sample a farmer's crop. The gray squirrel is a native of North America. Some time ago it was introduced to the British Isles and then to South Africa and Australia, much to the subsequent regret of the inhabitants who now regard it as a pest. Believe it or not, this one is also a gray squirrel, an albino gray. The only known population of albino grays is in Olney, Illinois, which calls itself White Squirrel Town. One or two hundred of these creatures live in Olney, protected by laws which give them the right of way when crossing streets and provide penalties for harassment or abduction. This animal would not survive long in the wild. It's much too conspicuous. In other respects, it's a perfectly normal squirrel. This one shows us how a squirrel can swivel its hind feet and come down a tree frontwards, unlike cats and certain other animals who have to come down tail first. The red squirrel is the tattletale of the woods. It's found all over North America. A western version is called the chicory. Like the gray and the fox, the red is just as at home on the ground as it is in the tops of the highest trees. It doesn't wait for food to fall. The seeds in the cones of evergreens are one of its favorite foods. A woodpecker hole makes an ideal home for a northern flying squirrel. This is a creature of the night, rarely seen during the day. It's hardly as big as a man's hand, but it has huge eyes for seeing in the dark. It's not at ease in the daylight. This Florida forest is the home of the handsome southern fox squirrel. This coloring is typical for the southern fox. It's the mating season, and we're about to witness an acrobatic courtship. These southern fox squirrels are bigger than their northern cousins, and they like big trees and open forests. The ground is always a dangerous place for tree squirrels, but perhaps even more so during the giddiness of the mating season. Caution is never totally abandoned, but there certainly are moments when this appears to be the case.
things are quieter now that they're mating. In 45 days, the female will give birth to a litter of two to five young ones, probably three. The future of the squirrel in North America was once in doubt. When the settlers were moving out across the continent, cutting forests and making farms, the squirrels, deprived of their habitat, started eating farmers' crops. Bounties were offered to encourage their destruction. In Ohio, dead squirrels were accepted in part payment of taxes. As a result, but mainly due to loss of habitat, the squirrel population declined. Then, later, as the forests started to recover, so did the squirrels, and so did other creatures who depend on trees, such as the pileated woodpecker. This squirrel is much browner in color than the ones we've just been watching, but nevertheless, it's also a typical southern fox. The southern fox comes in a black phase also. This one's gnawing on a hickory nut, using its razor-sharp incisors to cut through the hard shell. The nut season is not a time for moderation. Those rodent teeth are also useful when it comes to cutting twigs for building nests. These nests, which look so ramshackle, are generally very well constructed. A good thing in view of their exposure to the weather. a cypress swamp in Florida. Gray squirrels, like fox squirrels, have a southern as well as a northern version. This tree, draped in Spanish moss, is the home of this typical southern gray. A squirrel's tail is most important. It gives protection from sun and rain. It's used for signaling. It's a parachute and rudder for steering in the air, a float for swimming, and a blanket for warmth and comfort. Remember the albino gray in Olney, Illinois? Well, just to confuse us, here's yet another version of the gray which is also white, but not albino. It doesn't have pink eyes. This is the white southern gray. And now let's look at a few of the numerous ground squirrel relatives of the tree squirrel. In the east, the best known of these is probably the chipmunk. Another is the 13-lined ground squirrel, who is often spotted on an eastern golf course and wrongly identified as a gopher. This one is the Arctic ground squirrel. It's one of the few Arctic mammals who truly hibernate in winter. And here, like an elder statesman posing for his portrait, is a yellow-bellied marmot. The woodchuck, or groundhog, is very common in the east. But for sheer fun, a prize should go to these romping young black-tailed prairie dogs somewhere in Wyoming. An adult prairie dog keeps an eye on them.
The south rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona is the home of a tree squirrel which is unique in its coloring and in the curious tufts of hair which adorn its ears. It's called the Abert squirrel. The whitish tail and underparts are typical of the species. This Abert's nest was made of ponderosa pine twigs woven together with the needles still on them. These pines are also a main source of food for the Aberts. They eat the soft bark of the twigs, but they like cones as well for the seeds they find inside. The habitat which they share with other creatures, like the acorn woodpecker, is not rich like some of the eastern habitats, and so these squirrels range far in search of food, but they never cross the canyon. This fact has resulted in a curious phenomenon. On the north rim of the canyon, opposite the Abert's territory, is another population of tassel-eared squirrels. These are called the kaibab. With its dark underparts, the kaibab is quite different from the Abert's. Some say millions of years of erosion of the canyon split the range of tassel eards in half, and that the two populations have been evolving in isolation from each other ever since. A bird such as this Stellar's jay would never be at the mercy of such a trick of nature. The range of the kaibab is bounded by canyon on one side and elsewhere by desert. These handsome squirrels are trapped in a small corner of the world and until recently were in danger of extinction. But today the Kaibab is protected by law, and the future has brightened for this unique member of that charming and diverse fraternity, the tree squirrels of North America.